Hello everyone and welcome to Be Seen Director's Cut, the podcast that delves into the minds of film, TV and theatre directors while giving you a sneak peek behind the scenes into the directing skills that bring stories to life. I am so excited to have Kerry Frampton as a guest on the podcast today. Kerry is the founder and artistic director of Splendid Productions, and her versatility as a performer, professional fool, practitioner, writer, designer, musician, and director is truly awe-inspiring. Kerry also co-directed, co-wrote, and acted in the 2022 Olivia Award-nominated production of Midsummer Mechanicals at the Globe Theatre. Through Splendid Productions, she also creates challenging, entertaining, and politically engaging theatre productions for young audiences, while providing expert training in all areas of drama practice and theory. This summer, Kerry will once again grace the Sam Wanamaker Playhouse at the Globe with her latest creation, Rough Magic. I am thrilled to delve deeper into Kerry's journey, so without further delay, let's get started. Harry Frampton, welcome to the show. <laughs> 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 uh, it's so good to have you here, Kerry. Um, we met like a few years ago now, and I've watched you as an actor. I've been in the room with you as a director, and you've just got so many gems and nuggets that I wanted to share that with the world, basically. Um, so what I want to find out from you, Kerry, is when did your creative journey begin? I did tap dancing. Really? As a child. I was, too, I was a big mm. child, so my mum said I was too big for ballet. So I, <laughs> Sorry. So I was a big, I was a, bit, a tubby child. Yeah. <laughs> so I did tap dancing and I really loved, like I loved doing shows. I played guitar, I used to do guitar playing at Fate mm. or at the Irish Club. There's creativity in my family, mm. but like everyone is doing like normal work. So my dad worked in a factory, my mum worked at Asda, mm. but there's no, there's no creative anything within the family. Yeah. I mean, my mum's an, an art artist, like she's amazing, she can make anything, she sews. Mm. But like, I wanted to have a different life for myself. Really early, gotcha. I decided I wanted a different life for myself. Probably, I should have done an art foundation. What did you do? Well, so... If I was going to do an art foundation, because yeah. art's what I'm naturally good at. Oh, okay, like drawing, like art. drawing. Oh, okay, art, like gotcha, art. gotcha, gotcha. Like gotcha. that is what na nature is. I'm good at art. Gotcha. Um, mm. but I could not bear to be at home for another year. Okay. So I was like, no, no. So I decided to to try and do drama, and I was like, I got a D in A level theatre studies. But really? I, yes. But now you can study my company on three out of four examples. But also education didn't come t to me until I was like 22. Okay. I just wanted to not be where I was. Yeah. So I chose drama because I quite liked, I liked the collaboration. Mm -hmm. I love the idea of being in a room with people and problem solving. The problem solving bit to me is the, my favourite thing. Um, and also because I've got a short attention span, so I like the immediacy of and the shifting of personalities. Mm. I love the shifting of holding a room and trying to encourage people to have a sense of themselves or have a wider sense of what they are or what they could be. Mm. That's why I love working with young actors, because I, I think people narrow themselves down a little bit too soon. Mm or go, oh, I'm, I just do this type of acting or I'm this type of performer. Mm -hmm. And normally that's because they've had success in that thing, yeah. whatever that is. Yeah. Someone once told them was they were funny, yeah. so like as a passing comment, and now that's the thing that they do. Yeah. But how did you go from tap dancing to A-level drama to... I got in in one place. Um, and I, the drama school thing wasn't an option for me because you got loans. Because, gotcha. um, but there, there's no other way that I would have been able to afford to go to uni. Uni was only an option for me okay. because the state paid they for you to go right. to uni, uni right. but but they wouldn't have paid for me to go to drama school. Okay, so you did a degree in drama at uni? Yeah, so okay, I went to a place nice. called Bretton Hall, which is like a magical place. Mm. I don't think it prepares you for the industry, mm. but it basically prepares you for doing loads of different things. 
Um, so there are loads of companies that have come out of there, mm. uh, collaborative companies, and people who were teachers or devisers or makers. So is that where your directing journey began? No, I would never. Like the directing stuff is, is a side product of just trying to make work. Okay. So, From acting and. So I set up Splendid when my daughter was. How old was she? Like four or five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I started working with English Touring Theatre. I got a job. I applied to a job that was in like the Guardian's jobs page. Mm -hmm. um, and I was a workshop leader, so I was doing workshop uh, leading. Okay. And that's how I started. That's how I started my journey. So I would be a mum for a week, mm -hmm. and I would be workshopping around, mm -hmm. and then the week off I would be touring and performing. But the only way that I could arrange that is if I had my own company. Gotcha. So that's how Splendid began. Yeah. So I was doing one day a week business course, and it was a business course that was run at the Albany. It was called Head for Business. Mm -hmm. And it was specifically for creative people. So it was me and, like, DJs and filmmakers. There was a oh, tailor nice. there from Sudan. <laughs> it was just so many different types of people. Yeah. Um, and I remember the day that we had to go, we had to, to kind of go around going, my name is, and this is the name of my company. Mm. And I was like, my name is Kerry, and I am the artistic director of Splendid. And I laughed so much because I was like, this is stupid. And now 20 years later, yeah. I have this company. Yeah, performing at the Globe and doing all kinds of yeah, yeah. stuff. And the Globe you know. stuff, it's just from working with people that end up the people that you're working with now, mm. those people are eventually going to be doing stuff. Yeah, doing stuff, mm. and that's how it happens. Yeah, yeah. So, like, connect with everyone, rinse everyone. Don't be afraid to rinse. Like, really, be a pest. Yeah, yeah. Don't just don't just email once. People maybe will email me once for something, and I'm like, n n n like, keep emailing me. And you know, if anyone gives you a little bit of like or mentorship or gives you advice like rinse them mm. so your your journey began with acting yeah and you call yourself a professional fool where does that where does that because, come from i mean like if you read my school reports mm -hmm. my attention span was short so i was up to mischief and the things that i loved i really loved and the things that i found hard it was very difficult to engage with like i'm smart but i am also very very stupid and very mischievous i don't want to be in charge of a room i want to mess with a room gotcha within actors like it is exciting to me when things when they go a bit rogue yeah i remember <laughs> yeah. because that's when interesting offers happen it's the balance between being technical mm. and being playful. You want a sense of danger in theatre. Mm. We don't want to feel like that everything is just going to be fine. Right, right. We, what we want is to see people taking risks. Mm. If you were watching a game of It, mm. you wouldn't want everyone with their hands by the wall just going, yeah, I'm safe, so I win. Right, right. What you want is the rogue kid that's going to run through the middle and like shimmy <laughs> past the person who's It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in th in in theatre, that's about the taking it off the page. We want that feeling that something else might happen. And I think there's something about being a clown mm -hmm. to have that mentality of rogueness, of wanting to upend or wanting to cause mischief or provocation. And I think as actors, the kind of nice, safe, technical actors, mm -hmm. that's not where the fun is. Mm -hmm. But also, I, it really it really suits me when people underestimate me. Mm. It, it's very handy for me yeah. if I'm in a room and people just go, oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah. then I can just get on and do my thing. Yeah, so I see now why you call yourself a professional fool. But also, I am a professional fool. Right. <laughs> but, right you're, but you're right. I guess if you have that as an actor in the back of your mind, it kind of makes you take different kinds of approaches to text. I think it's a Judy Dench quote, which is like, you don't, don't take, take yourself seriously, you take right. your work seriously. Right. I'm so serious about my work. But uh, my uniqueness mm. is my sense of kind of playfulness and mischief. Right. But when I'm working with young actors, I'm like, I want to hold this room as much as I can. Mm. I want to try and give everyone as much 
as I can. The full stuff is the playfulness yeah. that gets us out of our heads and into the present. Mm. The clown, the clown can only exist with a room, yeah. with an audience, whilst being present. The clown by itself doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. But that's good for actors, I think, to understand that it's not. Otherwise, everything is here. Mm. But actually, everything is about communicating. So what do you think the role of an actor is in society? To tell stories in an honest place with your... Bring into it what you uniquely can. What's it, Stanislavski? It's got like, you've got the real eye, so you. Mm -hmm. The dramatic eye, mm -hmm. which is the, whatever character you're playing. Mm -hmm. And then this third being, which is the combination of those three things. Yeah. When you're talking about being interesting, mm. Mm. you are what's interesting. Right. Your version of it is what's interesting. All of the stuff that you're bringing from your personal experience mm. and then what you don't have, your imagination or the notion of other people in your life that have got a similar kind of feeling. Mm. Anything that you can tap into. Remind me the discipline that you teach. The thing that I work most in is is. Brechtian theatre, so um, which is social political theatre, which just sounds kind of dry, but mostly it is that space is political. So I'm obsessed with space. I'm obs obsessed with bodies in space, voices in space, and societally, who has space and who doesn't, who believes that they have space and who doesn't. So from me post the age of 40 mm -hmm. is a very different creature to me before 40. So I've had to learn how to hold and take space. Yeah when I speak to expect to be heard right. and still that's something to kind of work on mm. um I think sometimes in drama schools like movement is taught yeah voice is taught mm -hmm. but the combination of the two for me is the sort of holy yeah, yeah, yeah. grail that sense that top to toe characterization so for you are those are those the, the actors that really stand out like when you're when you're auditioning and you're like Yes. So for any any show yeah. I'm directing, yeah, it's always a workshop audition. What does that look like? So for Midsummer Mechanicals, mm. that was at the Globe last year, mm. um, which was and the year before, mm. I was specifically looking for a working class cast. Okay. But you can't ask people if they're working class. Yeah. We'd have maybe twenty five people in a room. I ran four workshop mm. workshop auditions. Mm. So because the work that I make is ensemble based, mm. I'm building a group of people who've got to genuinely on a daily basis mm. be together. Yeah. So I'm looking for different dynamics. Yeah. And also in a team of four, if you're multi-rolling, mm. you have to be looking for four very different types of physical body. Right. Yeah. I think um, casting wise, there's so much that is not about you as an actor. Yeah. So when I, and I, I don't know if that's the same for other, other directors, for me, but for me, mm. I want to look in a room and go, who would I want to spend some time with? Yeah. I also want to make sure that if I've got a cast of four, that there is definitely only half of those people are white people. Mm -hmm. That's really important to me. Mm. Mechanicals, they needed to be, like, they had to be improvisation skills. Yeah. They had to be able to think on their feet, an ensemble. Also, were they, will someone work with them again? Mm. So the work I'm making at the moment is mm. very family-centred. Yeah. So I will also be inviting people into the room who've done family work or yeah. has wor have worked with young people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also because I work in drama schools, mm. there are people who I'd be like, can we just bring this person in? yeah. So I've been doing two days of movement direction on a show. Mm -hmm. I'm only in for two days. Yeah. But if I was an actor in that room, mm -hmm. I'd have looked me up. Mm. I'd have looked me up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you might just go, oh, she's just here for a day doing stupid stuff. I'm like, I'm literally casting a show in the summer. Mm. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, you just, don't just know. like you never know who you're going to meet. Yeah, 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 it's true. All right, Kerry, that's all we have time for. Unfortunately, oh, I could talk to you for like ugh, hours, but um, we're about to head over now to the mm -mm -mm. to the mm -mm. location to do our scene, and then we'll be back 
for an interview with yeah debrief on the scene and everything <laughs> that we've just done okay everyone we are now going to pull back the curtain delve into the world of directing and go behind the scenes with Kerry and see firsthand how Kerry shapes performances and brings scripts to life. The script we'll be exploring today is Stainless by the talented Antoinette Isioma, which has been slightly modified for the purpose of this show. Are you ready? Let's get started. <coughs> Promise. You won't tell anyone. Promise. Don't mess this up, yeah? My back's on the line. I won't. Don't worry. So what then? Nothing, just... Sure you want to do this? Yeah, yeah. Why are you always running around doing these sneaky errands for him? Let him handle his own business. Why are you sounding like that? We, we talked about this before. I, I already explained everything to you and you said you understood. Well, I don't. What's there not to understand? Marvin's my boy. So? That ain't enough, Jackie. So what do you want me to do, huh? I'm trying to make ends meet and he's helping me out. It's, it's not going to be forever, but right now... I ain't got much of a choice. That's because you don't want one. Can you play it again? Like, how, how long have you got here? Oh, I've got five minutes. Yeah, I didn't play that, yeah. yeah. What does Jackie expect to happen here? Like, what does she imagine in her mind that this is going to be? Basically, make sure that she she accomplishes what, what we've established. So, so, if we establish that this relationship, mm. cousins, yeah. and that... You are older, so there is yeah. like a pecking order here. Yeah, yeah. And normally, you can get her to do what you need her to do. Okay. So, what's on here? What's on the paper? It's her dress. Okay. Yeah. Do you imagine that you're in public in this scene? Do you imagine this is like a table amongst other tables? Mm -hmm. I want you to play space, essentially. Okay. There might be something interesting to try about playing it like you might be overheard. Okay. Because at the moment, the choices are, feel too bold. Yeah, um, okay. Uh, right. So I don't feel like the stakes feel like, it, it doesn't feel like there are quite enough stakes at the moment. Right, right, right. How much do you know about this moment for you? This is new information. Well, I know that she's sending me, she's giving me the location, but that she's going elsewhere. Like, in my head, she's coming, so we're going, well, no, you're going somewhere else. Yeah, I'm going some, to meet. Yeah, to yeah. meet someone. Of, and you're yeah. worried about this. Yeah. Um, do you think that you have ever said how you feel about this before? About what she does for a living? I feel like it's like it's only slight. I've never really like gone deeper, interrogated her, and been like, "Do you want to?" So, so if we're saying age-wise, this might be the first time that you, as a grown-up, mm -hmm. or you as a perceived like adult now. Mm -hmm. So don't play it all early. You have to play the decision in the moment. You don't know that you're going to do what you do by the end of this scene. Yeah. And think about the note that you're passing. There's mm -hmm. some lines in there that are, I think are about the handover. So we'll yeah. have to look at that. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's also something in the, in the handing over of something that's sort of secret. Got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah? Like how you hand it over at the moment. It's too... Yeah, or like, you know, and it's so folded and so neat. Uh. But like, if I personally, because my brain's busy, if I get given a bit of paper or if I get given a little... It's like, what's she going to do with it? Is she rolling it up? Is she... Because it tells us how you feel about the thing. Mm. You know, when do you let go? Right, right. When do you yeah. take it? Because yeah. there's something about this that's sort of like a baton being passed. Mm. Right? Because yeah, okay. will this get her in trouble? Potentially, yeah. Right, so there's no stakes in that. There's got to be stakes in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The choice to hand it over. Mm. And is that a business thing? And if it's a business thing, then the exchange of that mm. is like, has to not be family. Okay. 
that has to be like, well, this is business. Okay. Be in your internal world a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Play a bit younger. Don't give your hand away too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The don't mess this up, you know, my back's on the line. Mm-hmm. And then the choice to take it. Like, I think it's all right to feel a bit defensive. I don't know, you know, when an older family member still thinks that you're seven. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, there are, there are loads of flavors that you can try. Why have you agreed to do this? Because I love her. Are there other options for Charlie? I don't think so. I feel like if I'm alongside, maybe I can have some more of a say in this. Do you think this is like just one thing that she's going to do? Mm-hmm. Okay, so try it this time where you're playing a bit more. Right, I've got, I've got this. Mm-hmm. Right, let's have a little play with that. Promise you won't tell anybody. Promise. Don't mess this up, yeah? My back's on the line. I won't. Don't worry. So, what then? Nothing. Just... You sure you want to do this? Yeah. Yeah. Why are you always running around doing these sneaky errands for him? Let him take care of his own business. Why are you sounding like this? I already explained everything before, and you said you understood. Yeah, well, I don't. What's there not to understand? Marvin's my boy. So? That ain't enough, Jackie. What you, so what do you want me to do? Huh? I'm trying to make ends meet, and he's helping me out. This ain't going to be forever, but right now, I ain't got much of a choice. It's because you don't want one. Want what? It feels like quite a, you know, that's a line. That might be the first time that you have one voice that opinion. Like there are lots of different ways of playing it. Is it something that you just have to get out? Which shows a kind of youthful impulse? Or is it something she's thought about for a long time? I feel like you're giving her too much attention. Yeah, I feel like I'm giving her too much attention. I feel you're like... (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think, right, if you play, Mm. I think, Marion, because you've got so much, your natural thing is like doing the thing. But I think your thing is here. Right, right, right. Right, your thing is business. Okay. So when you come... And also, if you're here, you don't have to feel. Right, right, right. If you're in business Mm. mode, you're not in cousin mode. Okay. When she's saying about, you know, if you got this, Mm -hmm. uh, can we have a little play with you being a bit... Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I've got this. Yeah, what do you mean? Yeah, I've got this. I'm grown. I'm grown. I'm not like... You don't have to look after me anymore, like I've got this. Just mm-hmm. let's have a little play with that. Because mm-hmm. I, I reckon it's possible to do that uh, nervousness, the uncertainty and the kind of uh, anticipation of it with the little, so that we're playing with the variations that come out always with when mm. your ego gets pricked. Mm. Yeah. I think there's something about you kind of like, you, you, um, you have the thought, then you say the thought. Yeah. Just say the thought. Speak the thought. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think, Reeves, there's something that you can, like, uh, have a little play with the, the space between you on the table. Mm. So you know that I'm always, like, bodies-wise, what a body's doing. Mm. Like, at the beginning, when you're waiting, stuff that you, what are you playing with? What are you kind of distracting your brain with? What are you, where's your focus? You've got lines about, like... You know, let me, let me, help, let me help you. Yeah. And she's gone from like being the younger one to being the wise one. And I feel like Marion, that this character's got. If your if your character has to now be recruiting your own cousin, like how many options? Mm. Yeah, she's out of options. Yeah, this can't be like your first, the ideal choice. Mm. So the, the want, therefore, is not a want. Mm. So, like, you can be kind of so 
of sketchy with the one. Yeah, I want to do this. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. You yeah. can, like, scuff it. You yeah. can go over it because you don't want to. Okay. So we have to make sure that the emphasis or that you, like, are really open for the one. Okay. Um, like, you're convincing yourself as well. Okay. Something like that. But apart from that, just make sure that the words are on the thought. Okay. Not the thought. And then the, then the lines. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's do it again. But, like, you're going to try and do it as, as if you've got a uh, kind of... Someone's on a time, on an alarm clock or on a timer. Yeah. Your job is to try and keep keep her here until you get what you can ne- need. Your job is like, yeah, I've got I've, time. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. <clears throat> Promise you won't tell anybody. Promise. Don't mess us up, yeah? I won't. My back's on the line. Don't worry. So what then? Nothing, just... You surely want to do this? Yeah. (laughs) Why are you always running around doing his sneaky errands for him? Let him handle his own business. Why are you sounding like that? We talked about this before. I already explained everything to you and you said you understood. Well, I don't. What's there not to understand? Marvin's my boy. Yeah, well, that's not enough. So what do you want me to do, huh? Um, <laughs> and Go he's again with that. Because you're, you're right to start away. Right? Hmm. So what do you want me to do and make that be like, you are out of options? Do you want to do your line? Before I say this, what do you want me to do? Uh, why are you always running around? Okay, yeah, yeah, let's go from there. That feels like quite a, you know, that's a line. That yeah. might be the first time that you have, one, voiced that opinion. Like, there are lots of different ways of playing it. Is it something that you just have to get out? Which shows a kind of youthful impulse? Or is it something she's thought about for a long time? Have a little play with that little section. Why are you always running around doing his sneaky errands for him? Let him handle his own business. Why are you sounding like that? We already talked about this before. I already explained everything to you and, and you said you understood. Well, I don't. What? What's there not to understand, man? Huh? Marvin's my boy. So? That ain't enough, Jackie. So what do you want me to do? Hmm? I'm trying to make ends meet and he's helping me out. This ain't gonna be forever, but right now, I ain't got much of a choice. That's because you don't want one. <laughs> One what? You know what? I ain't got time for this right now. I'm coming with you. No, no, you're not. Yes, I'm coming. Why should I stay here and be worried? <sighs> Charlie, please. I don't have the patience for this right now. Just stay here. No. Charlie, man. No, why should I? Because you'll get her. So now you know how I feel. I'm worried every time you leave. You say you got my back to the end, yeah? Well, same here. Let me help you out. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, I'll be there. No, wait, man. Cool. Yeah, man, that's all. That's our kids. Yeah. Yeah. Help the look, kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome back, Enriva. Thanks for joining um, us in the in the room. Um, it was so nice being in the room with you and just the way you think and the way you see things is really, it's really enlightening. I, th- I guess what I wanted to ask was like, it was hard for me to figure out whether to make my character, um, like you were saying, like a bit more rough on the edges or someone that's like not usually meant to be in this kind of situation. How do you make character choices in terms of personality traits and and characteristics your character has had to exist in the world Mm. we all have like our armors that we have to build up to keep us safe so i feel like for your character you can't play necessarily one thing throughout i think in that moment what we know is she hasn't got time for her for her cousin to be dealing with anything that is emotional, anything that's going to take her here. But the people that you love take time Time, and emotional toll. Mm. This isn't like she's 
like an estate agent. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like her business is, her time is really yeah. important. Yeah, yeah, yeah And particularly yeah. if she's got someone who's, who's more important. Mm. This is someone who could potentially wreck her life. So the stakes are high and there's no room in this scene for heart from the off. Right, right, right. I think as an actor, you could be, you could be like, I want all of these things to come through in the character. But Marion, you're, you're a smart actor and you're so smart. I feel like you want us to see your, all of your work. Right, right. Rather than the... Like all of that prep is really, really important because it's the detail, but we don't need to see all of the workings. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, yeah. We sort of have to trust that, that that will be in the performance because you understand the stakes. Yeah. I've yeah. got a question just based off what we've done, but something that I also wonder about in terms of moving how much space do you give yourself to move especially in the face as well because i remember when i started self-taping mm. i was like wow my face is so expressive like this there's, there's too much movement and so you you told me like you know my body wasn't changing at one point i was just like kind of sat but there's so much going on mm-hmm. so i, I, I kind of mm. question like can you move <laughs> How much do you move? How much is too much? You know when says, someone says something to you that has an impact and you can sort of see people like deflate or you can see where the words land in mm-hmm. people. I think you have to have an awareness of the body. Uh, I want to see geography in bodies when they're... I want to see who it is that you're speaking to when you're thinking about certain things. Where is that placed? Even micro shifts that if you if you played it more theatrically that you can then strip away, but know that that moment you want the shoulder to slightly deflate or when you want to raise your eyes. I think we just have to see the thought landing in a body that looks like it isn't there just to deliver dialogue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For me, I'm always interested in like, how can we get a top to toe performance in whatever scale that is? Mm. We want to see the thought, but we also want to see the impact of the thought that or the choice to say the line. Mm. And I don't think you can play that like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what? That kind of leads me on to the next question that I was going to ask, which is like, making characters interesting. So, I, <laughs> so like, for me personally, I've come a long way in terms of, I was very, I was a very stoic person. What? I like, can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I was more stoic than what, what you saw when you met me. Like, I was oh even more Lord. stoic. When they say, like, okay, make the character as close to you as possible. But at the same mm. time, you want to watch an interesting character. Do you know what I'm saying? Like the blend well, between. you probably don't suffer with that because you're quite interesting. <laughs> nah, no, but also I'm, I'm interested in your use of the word interesting. Marion, okay. because essentially you, you mm. are what is interesting. People are just fascinating. The people who are like, give you nothing. <laughs> I think I remember one time we were in rehearsal and you're like, Marion, I'm getting nothing from you right now. <laughs> it feels like you just... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just because actually it's quite a high status move mm. to look like you are not affected by anything that anyone has to say yeah but (laughs) but if that's a character imagine what that person has had to go through in their life that means that disassociation Mm -hmm. or choice not to do anything is a better choice than pretending to smile you're right what 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 does interesting mean we want is truth yeah what Mm. we want is in this moment is this character believable within this situation you don't want any performance that feels like acting it has to feel like this body is having these thoughts in this moment at this yeah. time and not just from the neck up mm. Mm. i got a question mm-hmm. with writing and the material that you get the scripts that you get if you look at something you're like i'm getting nothing from this how do you bring that person to life when you're kind oh, of yeah. dealing with Something that's <laughs> where, what, where the actor is like making that text do the work. Yeah. Mm. Probably don't judge it before you do it. Mm. Like find as many different ways as you can of being playful with it so it's got aliveness and then watch it back. Yeah. I understand that that is also a luxury. Yeah. But also maybe 
don't do that project. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what I mean? <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, if, if yeah. you are reading a text and you're like, oh, from just reading it, mm. and then you've got to be on set with those words in your mouth, trying to make them fly on a daily basis. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. That, make, that makes me just go, do some writing. Reba does writing. She's yeah, exactly. Writer. But that's what I mean. Like, yeah. like, who is doing all this writing that is so dry that as an actor you go, there is nothing in here. <laughs> How can you make... You know, that scene that you've just done, there's so much in it. There's so much to play with it. There are so many options in it. You know, it's not a complicated scene. Like, it sounds like two people having a truthful dialogue. Yeah. If you were doing a reading for something where you were like, I've got nothing, I just... Don't do it. Maybe. But again, this is, you know, that is a privilege and that's a luxury to say that. Because, you it's you know, true. you might want the job. And if you're a young actor and you're starting out, the power dynamic is off for you. Mm. And I think the feeling might be, or oh, maybe I'm not getting it or maybe I'm not. But I think to be, to have a sense of yourself and a sense of the kind of work that you want to be making. So going off of what Reba just said in terms of a script, how important is things like actioning? Because I find that, Actioning is something that that is a hot topic. Like I'll, I've met people, different people, and they're like, oh, "I love actioning," or "I hate actioning." The actioning. little book, the little. Red. Yeah, I've the literally little. Literally bought it with me. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and I bought it with me today. And it's like some people use it, some people don't. Um, when we did the BBC My Show with Brian Cox, he was like, he still does actioning till yeah, this day. Yeah, yeah. How important do you think actioning I th- is? I think that going through the process of it mm. is really, really handy. Okay. Working with young actors and actors in training, there is a sense of like loving acting, mm. but very often their sense of acting is about themselves mm. and okay. themselves saying words and having an idea. Nothing is motiveless. Mm. So everything we do is trying to do something, trying to get something, trying to persuade someone. And just by going through the process, I think it helps you understand who is your figure within this world, what is it that they want, and how are they going to get it? I'm happy you asked because, especially when I'm in the room and the director asks me, it's like, "What are you trying to do?" Often I'm just like, uh, I "Know it in essence, but like in action." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, "I don't know." So it's something I still wrap my head around because mm. it's weird. Like when you get to midway through the rehearsal process or the end I'm like yeah I'm starting to get it but it's just like in the beginning when they ask me what are you doing I I don't I don't know or maybe I don't have the language Mm -hmm. you know like I don't know I know it in my body what I'm trying to do Mm -hmm. but I don't have the language to say it as a working class person actioning feels like homework Mm -hmm. and it also feels like another technique that I find it hard to engage with and use but I have I have to find my way of using it because I'm a body first person and my body knows before my brain knows. Mm -hmm. I I treat action in as a a tool to help me understand the scene that I'm in Mm. and then I play the scene. Okay. So in your scene back there, you know, Charlie's choices are halt to stop to champion to soothe to reassure Mm. to nudge but for me all of these things are physical things so Reba as a physical performer even when I'm there I will be physicalizing the action in so I turn it into a like a physical score Mm. that has helped massively yeah because it's like the word is action it's active so Carrie's been helping me out sometimes (laughs) And the way you look at text, I know it's experience as well, because let's say Reba and I, we get a self-tape, mm. right? We've got three days. You got like one. Or like, like one yeah. or like 24 hours, 12 hours. Yeah. 12 hours? Literally, I got, I got an in the room meeting for Shakespeare, two massive scenes. I got given it no, the day before right. at four o'clock. And my meeting was at four o'clock the next day. That says something about the institution. Mm. It puts you at a back foot. If you don't think of Shakespeare as your comfy place, mm. and who does? Right. Right? Right. So my, my, what I was going to ask is, what would you say is something that we can really focus on when getting a script in order to bring it to life? Because the kind of work yeah. that I feel like I'm doing is like the work that I would do if I had 
time. Yeah. Right? And as a director, what's something that we can really focus on to bring the character to life in the short space of time that we have in order to bring that truthfulness and that reality to the text? Yeah. I think to play the situation because those words are not happening in a vacuum. So what are the stakes? Mm -hmm. Because that then gives you a rhythm because you immediately have to be in the moment. So you have to know what's holding you. It's not just a bit of script mm -hmm. in nothingness. And I don't think that we need to see all the, gotcha. see all the work. Right, right. Otherwise we're seeing an actor going through. Too many things. Yeah. Too many things. Mm. Speak on the breath. Don't make weird extra sounds when you should be speaking. So sometimes at the beginning of lines, we'll make like a <laughs> sound or a, mm, or a, that is when you should be saying the line. Look at the punctuation. Please, please, please look at the punctuation. The writer is written for a purpose. If you've got a massive long sentence that tells you how long, how, like how quick that person is saying that sentence, like have a look at the rhythm of mm. that character. Mm. Rhythm is character. Yeah. And the writing gives you so many clues Sometimes actors, who they just put too much into everything. And sometimes it's not that deep. <laughs> she said, it's not that deep. So it's sometimes it's not that deep. <laughs> yeah. If you're like, okay, well, they've got this. Watch that there was their grandfather's. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, and yeah, but also they've got to get this bit of text out. Yeah. yeah. There's a sculptor called Constantin Brancusi. He's Romanian and dead. <laughs> and Constantin Brancusi has got this this quote which I which I use a lot, which is simplicity is complexity resolved. There has to be an ease. Like we need to there has to be an ease about your practice. There's something about working class actors where you you've got a sense of graft or a sense of like I have to deserve to be here. Mm. Yeah. Man. I have to yeah. do the work. I have to be better. I have to show that I'm better. What can I do? But um you also need to breathe. You also need to, um, we don't need to see all the working. Yeah. yeah. All right, we've got to cut it there because we're over time. But Reba, thank you so much. Oh, well, you already know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for being my scene partner. Thank you so much for being a guest on the, sh on the podcast. No and worries. just hmm. so being a friend, man. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no nah, man, I appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate watch out, Reba. Reba's gonna be doing big things, man. And you things. too, hey. Like just the pair of you, come mm. now. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. cool.